Hello, greetings everyone, and welcome to another edition of Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News. I'm Craig Nolan. Thanks for joining us. Happy 2020. I'm Daniel Pineda. I'm back, and my name's Adele Quo. <laughs> welcome back. back. Welcome back. As you may have noticed, <laughs> but maybe no one noticed. To, uh, almost full strength here, here tonight with Adele and Daniel back. Good to have you guys back. Hope you enjoyed your uh, assignment yeah. or wherever you were. And Cam did a great job, so we want to yes. thank Cam. Thank did a great you, job thank of you, Cam. In and uh, Mama G over there on camera one. Did you do some filling? Anyway. <laughs> We're sort of back, and we uh, we hope you're back too. Thanks for watching this. Uh, We're back. Our, I don't know our, if you're back. Second studio <laughs> in studio show for 2020, and uh, here's the stuff: news and community bulletin board. Uh, as you may have noticed, Adele is here for another edition of <laughs> It's Easy, Easy Being, Being Green. Green. Such well, energy. We're getting, we're getting pretty good at that now. CBB, as I may or may not have mentioned, a roll in, roll in <clears> number <throat> one, something new with uh, Mellotrons. Ooh. Our, our new 55... Enticing. Our what? Enticing. Oh, enticing, of course. <laughs> our 55-plus news, formerly news for seniors, our 55-plus news segment, and then roll in number two, the story of a little house in Arlington. And that's our show, but before we begin, here's a social media reminder for Senior Pineda, who's back in the saddle. I think again. Craig's still stuck in 2019. 2019. <laughs> Could be. Well, well, Craig, you can watch the Arlington Weekly News on our very own YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Arlington Weekly News. And the number one... Also, Facebook.com slash Arlington Weekly News. And we can't forget, of course, the radio. Also on the radio, WERA 96.7. You can hear the audio from our little show here on the radio. WERA 96.7 LP FM. All right, first of our news items. Okay, that's why we have hard copy. Here we go. Well, Arlington police are warning residents of a new telephone scam in the area. Fraudulent callers identify themselves as technicians from Dominion Energy and tell their victims that they are, have unpaid utility bills. The callers then threaten to disconnect power unless funds are sent immediately. A fake claim number and phone number is given to the victim and then usually instructions follow and they tell the people to pay using a gift card or prepaid debit card. Dominion Energy does not call, email, or text customers asking for personal information. Customers who do want to verify the status of their account can call Dominion Energy directly, and here is their number, 366. Is that right? No, I'm sorry, 866. 366 on your screen there, 4357. Next story, Daniel, it's your turn. Well, correct. Now on to our second news story Next for news the story. 2020 newscast, our second one. Well, a propane gas tank leak was reported last Saturday in the 4000 block of Fairfax Drive. The source of the leak was located at around 1215 p.m. by fire department and hazmat officials. The leak was reportedly coming from a building that is under construction. Although the leak was brought under control, units remained on the scene to conduct air monitoring. Propane buildup is considered very dangerous because of a single spark can certainly cause an explosion and fire capable of injuring or even killing people nearby. All right, Daniel, also in our news items, well, you don't usually comment on the weather here on Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News, mostly because it's a weekly show and the weather take to the weather is subject to uh, changes more often than that. However, having recently reported on our uh, rather cold November weather and coming out of an unusually warm weekend last weekend, well, we're here to tell you now the party's over. Aha! Although weekend temperatures last weekend reached, uh, in some cases, well over 70 degrees, the period from now through January 26th is expected to return to merely seasonal weather, with daytime highs running from the upper 30s to the mid-40s. And some of the white stuff, S-N-O-W, that mm -hmm. snow, is possible. So watch the skies, Daniel. Wait, you mean that there's not going to be 70 degrees every Saturday and Sunday? Well, that's you, a bummer. Not unless you move to Florida, you know. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> but Craig, car windows were smashed and airbags were stolen from about 10 cars last Saturday morning. The damaged vehicles were primarily located in the Columbia Forest and Sherlington areas. 
between Four Mile Run and Route 7. Police say that they did not have a description of any suspect or suspects. Although Arlington County police officers are proactively patrolling Arlington's neighborhoods, they also encourage public participation in reporting suspicious activity. In addition, they suggest that residents remove all valuables from their cars and lock the doors at 9 p.m. All right, Daniel, and uh, I think that's it for our news items. It, it, it is, and it's time for Adele. And are you ready for this? Should we do this? Maybe. One more time. <laughs> Another installment of It's, it's Easy Being Green. green. Need it. Woo! Woo! Such anticipation. Here's Adele. Back in action again. Here's All Adele. All right. Welcome back, Arlington. It is good to be back from the holidays. My name is Adele Quo, and Here's Joe Treefrog, our mascot. I'm sure you've been missing him. Snow, 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 snow brings salt to our roads and therefore our landscapes. Arlington County invites you to learn more and sign up to get informed, especially if you're a property or building manager and winter service provider interested in finding a better way to melt ice from the roads. A large and diverse group of stakeholders in Northern Virginia have formed Salt Management Strategy, or SAMS, to tackle the challenge of using salt to melt ice from roads and sidewalks. In 2018, according to the USGS, 42 million tons of salt were produced in the United States, with highway de-icing salt accounting for the largest use, which is about 43%. While salt has many benefits in a storm, like making our paved surfaces safer and keeping our businesses and vital services open during winter, salt also carries negative impacts to our infrastructure, our property, and freshwater ecosystems. Road salt and the presence of more and more paved surfaces contribute to increased runoff to the storm drains, which therefore carries our polluted runoff to the local streams and rivers, the same rivers that provide our region's drinking water. This salt is corrosive, and when it degrades the older pipes, it can release toxic heavy metals into the drinking water. Road salt was one of the main culprits in Flint, Michigan's water crisis, where lead in the drinking water poisoned an entire city. In Montgomery County, the drinking water coming from Potomac River is three times as salty in 2015 as it was 25 years earlier, making residents uneasy. The increased salt also makes it difficult for freshwater plants and critters to survive the increased salinity and the higher concentration of chloride in our local waterways. To learn more in 2020, sign up to stay informed on what Arlington and Virginia is doing about road salt. There's a website on your screen, www.deq.virginia.gov slash SAMS, S-A-M-S dot A-S-P-X. For lower hanging fruit, why not add high salt tolerant plants along the roads and walkways on your property? There are some truly hardworking Virginia native grasses with high salt tolerance for a sunny location, such as Andropogon virginicus, Muhlenbergia capillarius, these are all Latin names, so I have fun pronouncing them, Panicum amarum and Panicum virgatum, and here's a fun one, Schizacrium scoparium. Aquilegia canadensis is great for shady dry woodland areas, and Caltha palustris are great for sunny moist sites, whereas Heliopsis helianthoides are great for our sunny roadside areas. And a great shrub, if you have the room, is going to be this Virginia native Morella species, more commonly known as bayberries and wax myrtles. So remember, it's easy being green. Now you're just showing off with yeah. all yeah. those ladder words. I have That's to practice. Ridiculous. I have to keep practicing. <laughs> <laughs> practice, well, like practice, bay, practice. Bayberries is a whole lot easier than Manciopus clamonopus. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, he got it. Bayberries is the common name I and like it's a beautiful berries. salt tolerant There'll plant. be a quiz after this, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to quiz you, Daniel. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Thanks, There'll be no Adele. more time, hopefully. <laughs> we appreciate all of your Latin names down Thank there you. and your uh, e EBG segment. All right, here we go. As promised now, our CBB Community Bulletin mm. Board 5. Well, building toys are a great, great way, or great way, 
boy, the Latin's got me going. <laughs> the kids to have fun and develop their creativity skills. This event will provide a variety of toys to build with, including Legos, Kiva planks. Ooh, what are they? Crystal climbers and a lot more. This is all happening on Thursday, January 23rd from 4.30 to 5.30 in the p.m. portion of the day at the Campbell Room in the Shirlington Branch Library, 4200 Campbell Avenue. No registration required. Attendance is on a first-come, first-served basis, so get there early. Daniel. And Craig, on to some more CBB stories. Protect your pets with this next event. The Animal Welfare League of Arlington will be offering a low-cost rabies and microchip clinic for dogs and cats. A three-year rabies vaccine will be offered to those with a certificate of previous rabies vaccines and a one-year vaccine will be offered to all others. You can also register your pet with a microchip, which lets your pets be, well, easily identify if they manage to escape. Make sure all dogs are on a leash and all cats come in a crate. Any animals showing aggressive behavior, well, unfortunately, are not going to be served. This will be taking place on Thursday, that's January the 23rd, from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. That's at the Animal Welfare League of Arlington, located at 2650 South Arlington Mill Drive. All right, Mr. Daniel, oh, say again? Mr. Nolan. Oh. <laughs> Gracias, Senor Pineda. Here we go. Uh, also on our CBB items, uh, Chinese New Year's coming up. It's the year of the rat, R-A-T, the rat. Chinese celebration of the Lunar New Year is one of the biggest holidays in all of Asian culture and is coming up soon. This event will feature a variety of activities, including New Year's crafts, cute animal meetings, and the traditional Lunar New Year celebration mm -hmm. of chasing off the mythical beast, Nian. Nian? I'm not sure about that one with paper poppers. This is all happening on Saturday, January 18, from 3.30 to 5 in the afternoon at Long Branch Nature Center, 625 South Carlin Springs Road. Children must be accompanied by a registered adult. To register and find out more about it, give them a call on your screen there. Here's the number, 703-228-4747. Daniel. Wow, the year of the rat. The year of wow, the that's, that's a downer. Well, though, the LGBT community, especially the transgender community, has grown much larger in recent years. There are still lots of misunderstandings surrounding what it means. Equality Virginia, the leading LGBT advocacy group in Virginia, will be hosting this event to help inform people and answer questions about the transgender community and lifestyle. This is happening on Sunday, January the 26th from 1015 to 1145 a.m., at Congregation Etz Haim. That's located at 2920 Arlington Boulevard. All right, Daniel, and uh, I think that does it for our CBB file. We'll be back with our uh, 55 plus report. Yes. Right after we hear something about uh, new from Mellotrons. Check it out. Check it out.
Yeah. There you go. And now you so know good. it's something new with Militrons is all that about. That melody's going to be stuck in my head now. Who knew? <laughs> There you go. Thanks, Hef. Okay, here we go. As promised now, news uh -oh, for seniors, uh, formerly news for seniors, there now we're at 55 plus news segment. And away we go. <coughs> Daniel Droich is a Gallup trained strength finder coach. And she will demonstrate how the power of an intention is a foundation for setting goals. January is always a good month for setting goals or a set of intentions. And we were quoting there. This event takes place on Wednesday, January 29, 6.30 to 7.30 in the p.m. portion of the day at Arlington Mill 55 Plus Center. They're located at 909 South Dinwiddie. For more information, enter register. Give them a call at the number on your screen and in your ear. 703-228-7369. Daniel. Well, this I have my notes ready because this next one is really a tongue twister. This is Go my quiz. It. Well, art historian Joan Hart will present two illustrated lectures featuring the famous artists Edward Manet and Claude uh, Monet and Winslow Homer. You've been practicing. <laughs> From the best, right here. There is an admission fee of $6 for each one of those lectures. The first lecture will feature Manet, the pioneer of the French avant-garde style which shocked Parisian society. The next lecture will highlight Manet's contemporaries, French Impressionist Cla Claude Manet and American master Winslow Homer. That's Monet. Uh, Monet. <laughs> Although Monet and Homer never met, their careers followed similar paths. Mm. The first lecture on Manet will take place on Friday, January the 24th from 1 to 3 p.m. And that all takes place at the Aurora Hills 55 Plus Center, located at 735 18th Street South. To register, give them a call at 703-228-5722. And the second lecture will take place on Monday, that's January the 27th, from 1.30 to 3 p.m. And that's at the Lee 55 Plus Center, all located at 5722 Lee Highway. To register, give them a call at 703-228-0555. I hope I did well, Mr. Uh, nice nice uh, Mr. job. Pre absolutely. <laughs> I tried my best there. Hope Monet and Mane made some Mane. Yeah. Here we go with <laughs> another of our 55 plus uh, news items here. Well, Pat Dubin was Geico's creative director for many years, and she will detail how Geico's advertising icon, the Gecko, <clears throat> excuse me, was created. Ms. Dubin, swallowing, was responsible for all of Geico's marketing materials and commercials. And she will share her firsthand account of how the Geico Gecko was born. That's coming up on Tuesday, January 28, 1.30 in the afternoon at Lee 55 Plus Center, located at 5722 Lee Highway. More information and registration at this number, 703-228-0555. Daniel. Well, Craig, for almost 20 years, Encore Learning has provided academic courses, special events, and clubs for adults 55 years of age and over. Laura Polari welbs the executive director of Encore Learning, will discuss the more than 70 classes being offered this year and details about the Cinema Club, Mindfulness Club, and other clubs will all take place on Wednesday, January the 29th at 11.30 a.m. That's at the Aurora Hills 55 Plus Center, located at 735 18th Street South. To register, give them a call at 703-228-5722. And as always, correct, we want to thank our own Thanks, Judy, Judy Masomni for this week's 55 Plus Stories. Thank you so much, Judy, for your hard work and your dedication. All right. Thanks, Daniel. And uh, that's our 55 plus segment. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll be back with sign off and bye bye if we have time right after we hear from the story of a little house in Arlington. Check it out. Here we go. This is the story of a little house in Arlington County, Virginia. When it was originally built as a bungalow in 1923, the county had only recently changed its name from Alexandria County, Virginia. Back then, Washington Boulevard was known as Memorial Drive, and the nearest cross street, now known as Frederick Street, was called Lacey Road. Let's see if we can find it on an old map from 1927. The maps were laid out and labeled differently back then, so let's flip it over so that it looks more like the Google Maps we see today. There it is. It's on the south side of Memorial Drive, one block north of Forest Street, which is now known as 12th Street North. 
There's a 1935 map that even shows the house and the lot, although it's not clear whether the lot had been split when the house was originally built. It wasn't a very big house, even in those days, with only 625 finished square feet inside. Even after an addition was attached at the rear of the house around 1940, it contained only 1,056 square feet, and it sat on a lot that wound up being 6,500 square feet. Later, in 1976, the little house was sold for $43,500. In that same year of 1976, the federal minimum wage was $2.30 an hour. It would have taken a minimum wage worker nearly 10 years to earn that much money, even before taxes. Maybe two minimum wage workers could have combined their incomes to actually buy that house. Forty-four years later, in 2020, the federal minimum wage has increased to $7.25 an hour, which is a little more than 3.15 times as much as before. Did that mean that the price of the house also increased by the same amount to a little less than $138,000 so that a minimum wage worker could earn that much in less than 10 years? No, it didn't. The value of the house was assessed in 2019 at $605,600, nearly 14 times as much as in 1976. That means that a minimum wage worker would take over 40 years to earn that much money. And now in 2020, the house is being listed for a price of $625,000 as is. What happened? Was the price increase due to inflation? Well, the value of $100 in 1976 is now estimated to be $452 in 2020. That's a little more than four and a half times as much, but that means that inflation alone would only increase the house's price to a little less than $197,000. That would put it out of reach of people earning the minimum wage, but maybe someone in the next couple of levels could manage it. However, at $625,000, the house would be unattainable for many more people. Something else happened soon after the sale of the house for $43,500 in 1976. Effective January 1st, 1977, Arlington County changed its method of assessment for property tax purposes. The county's annual report didn't tell what the old method had been, only that the new method would be based on 100% of appraised fair market value. It's hard to be sure what this did to the little house on Washington Boulevard, but Arlington's annual report shows the assessed value of real property increasing from $1,314,568,995 in January 1976 to $3,551,968,727 in January 1977. And that's an assessed value increase by more than two and two-thirds in just one year. Arlington's population had hovered around 170, 175,000 during those two years. That meant roughly the same number of residents and businesses were now being assessed at two and two-third times as much for their property. Metro's blue line didn't open in Virginia until July of 1977, so it's hard to see that as causing a commensurate boom in business development. Anyway, here's what the house looks like now. You'll notice that the second floor could have been a converted attic, since the ceiling slopes so much by the top of the window. It's described as having three bedrooms, but there are no posted photos of the interior of the house, so it's hard to guess what constitutes a bedroom. There are a few exterior photos that show the wooden porch on two sides, along with the addition to the rear of the house from 1940 and the driveway that doesn't lead to any garage. Even the real estate listings describe it as either an opportunity to build your dream home or an investment property. They don't even suggest that someone would want to live in it. What will become of this little house? There is a slight chance that some newlyweds looking to start a family will buy it as is, as their starter home. But the $625,000 price tag makes this unlikely when that same amount will buy a fully renovated 1953 home with interior space of over 1,600 square feet, four bedrooms, and a 10,220-foot square foot lot in nearby Falls Church. Chances are that within a year, this little house will be substantially reworked into a larger building designed to sell for a million dollars or more. Similar treatments have already been happening in the area. 
For example, a house at 4637 13th Street North, just a few blocks away, was built in 1934, sold in 1977 for $67,000, and then in 1995 was sold again for $189,000. Then in 2001, it was sold for 418000 but it was sold again later that year for 425000 In 2005, after a 2004 renovation, they sold it for $704,000, then for $900,000 in 2012. As of January 2020, it is a million-dollar house listed at $1,199,999. Who can afford to buy a $1.2 million house? Someone with $240,000 in cash who can pay a combined total of $1,175,000 over the next 30 years. To do that, they'd need to earn about $180,000 per year, which would put them in the top 10% of individual earners in the area. As more and more small houses like this are rebuilt, Arlington will continue on its track to become the county of indebted millionaires. Back to the news desk. Interesting, interesting, interesting. very nice. Great uh, research. Definitely done yeah. your research wow. there. That's it, it, That's quite a story. <clears throat> and uh, I'm sure there's quite a few more of them around like that. Oh, yeah. Here in Arlington. But we got to wrap up and move on down the road. It's nice to have the crew back. <laughs> my cr We're back <laughs> together. Back together. Well, my yeah. co-anchor's back. back here at the news desk with, with me. Thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for showing up, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was hard, great man. To, it was great hard. to have yeah. you back. But uh, that's about a wrap for uh, studio session number two here in 2020 yeah. of uh, Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News. Thanks for watching, and uh, we hope you come back and join us again next week. Have a safe week out there. We'll see you. Take care. Bye-bye.